It will soon be one year since Russia invaded Ukraine, and the world is still bickering about what exactly to do about it. That is all very depressing, but at least the world is talking about Ukraine. Whereas Burma, also known as Myanmar, is now approaching two years of being controlled by a ruthless military dictatorship, and no one of any import on the international scene seems to actually give a f Oh, there are occasional platitudes, but there is absolutely no interest in actually helping the people of Burma, who are being murdered in considerable quantities by their own military as they fight to re-establish some sort of answerable government. Perhaps that shouldn't be surprising when we remember that quite a lot of countries have industries that are actively assisting the Burma military with their killing of their own people. A recent report by the Special Advisory Council on Myanmar has highlighted that Burma's extensive military industry, which notably doesn't export anything, was not just entirely built up with imported equipment and expertise, but continues to be sustained by them despite notional sanctions. Most notable has been efforts to improve the military's production lines by imported equipment such as CNC machines, and also getting manufacturing equipment repaired and serviced abroad, which is known to be being in use to make weapons and ammunition that is then being used to kill protesters and civilians. The report highlights that companies in 13 countries are assisting the Burma military in this, with these being located in, amongst others, the United States, France, Russia, China, Israel, Singapore and India. These support and supply deals are, in the words of Yang He Li, one of the report's authors and a former UN Special Rapporteur to Myanmar, quote, enabling the Myanmar military, one of the world's worst human rights abusers, to produce many of the weapons it uses to commit daily atrocities against the Myanmar people. Foreign companies and their home states have moral and legal responsibilities to ensure that their products are not facilitating human rights violations against civilians in Myanmar. Failing to do so makes them complicit in the Myanmar military's barbaric crimes. Very true, though I am not going to be holding my breath on anything actually happening. And so the atrocities continue, most notably with airstrikes. In the last couple of weeks alone, there have been strikes reported all across the country that have killed civilians, a tactic that in the least indicates indiscriminate attacks, but looks suspiciously like deliberate targeting. On the 12th of January, the aid group Free Burma Rangers reported that a village was bombed in Karen State, eastern Burma, hitting two churches and a school and killing five civilians, including a mother and her baby, and injuring two more. Just a few days ago in Sagang province, located in the centre of the country, 15,000 people have had to flee as the Burma army followed up airstrikes on villages with a large-scale offensive that is reported to be burning entire villages in its wake. On top of all this, at least four airstrikes have occurred in Chin State in western Burma in the first two weeks of this month, killing an unknown number of people and causing hundreds to flee into neighbouring India. Of particular note here is that witnesses claim that the Burmese aircraft had conducted strikes in Indian territory itself, as well as using Indian airspace to make their attack runs on other targets, events that have notably not caused any comment from Delhi. Indeed, this marks a continuation of a pattern, with the Myanmar Air Force already accused of violating the airspaces of neighbouring Thailand and Bangladesh to attack targets. Any one of the events I cited earlier, which I should point out are just a few examples of the many that are constantly occurring, should have drawn widespread international condemnation. Indeed, in other situations of such blatant brutality, you would get calls and action on establishing a no-fly zone, as occurred in Iraq, or else the supply of at the very least anti-aircraft weapon systems to those under attack, such as we are seeing currently in Ukraine. But the muted reactions in these cases, especially where Burma military aircraft have entered neighbouring countries' airspace, spells out the reality of the situation. Said neighbouring countries are perfectly happy to ignore what is going on and continue to deal with the military junta that runs Burma. And if the report from the Special Advisory Council is even half accurate, which it certainly appears to be, then plenty of other countries are also happy to turn a blind eye and carry on with business as usual. 
To be honest, I've been involved with Burma for years now, and always known that as a rule of thumb, the international community never really gave much of a sh**. But the hand-wringing and wailing over one set of events, while another is utterly ignored, looks to me of a situation not just of indifference, but one of utter hypocrisy.